So this is part two of recreating this 3D particle system. If you didn't see the first part, we initially created the particle system itself. There's a link in the description going to the playlist for that, but we're just going to uh, start up where we left off previously. Here is the project that we were previously working on. And I think at this point, what we're gonna do is now add in all of the 3D elements. So the only 3D element we're really gonna do is just grab this shape. So right in here, the 3D shape. And in the shape, we have a couple different options for the shape. We're just going to go in and grab a sphere. So if we view the sphere, it's just a little ball like that. Now, there are a bunch of uh, 3D materials that we have, uh, shaders and, um, uh, materials. If we come up here to, uh, I think it's in effects, and then we come into templates, I believe, fusion, and then down in here we have shaders. And in here we have a bunch of different options for shaders. So if I just go like that, we can actually see what they look like. And I believe what I used is brushed metal, are we there? So that is the shader that I used for that original project. So that's all we're gonna grab. And if I close this and then open this, now you can, you can create your own, but this is just makes things a little easier for a good starting point. We can double click in here and it's just a, a group of a bunch of different elements that are, are, are creating this particular shader. So we'll just uh, collapse this and we will just connect this up. If we take a look, that is our ball right there. Right? So that's what we're going to be working with. From here, we have to grab, uh, let's grab a camera, 3D camera, and then this one right here, which is going to be a 3D renderer. If we take our camera, or we take our, sh our uh, shape and we connect it into our camera, we'll get a little merge here, but we're actually not going to connect it that way. We can go from our merge and go into our renderer. And then in between here, the magical, tool that we're going to be using. We can uh, right click and go into add tools. You can come up here to effects and go into tools. If we go into 3D, it's going to be in here and it is going to be, I believe it's called replicate 3D. And then we're just going to connect in and connect in. If we take a look, there we are. So now we have our shape is going to be taking the place of all of our particles. So if we take a look at these side by side, we have all of our particles and then we have our shape. Now, all of the things that we were previously working with, the shape size and all of that, it's all going to be there. And that is pretty much the whole project that we were working on. Now, to get it to look a little bit better, we're gonna do a couple of different elements, but the big one is if we connect this in and take a look at this final render. All right, let's switch this over to OpenGL so it goes a little quicker. And we'll take this. So I went into the render, I didn't really explain that. We went into the render 3D, and then the render type, we go to OpenGL, so it's on the graphics card. And we're gonna take this 3D merge and view it over here so we can see everything. Holding down Alt or Option and middle mouse button and then rotating, we can see everything from a different angle. I'm just going to grab the camera controls here and pull the camera back so I can see it in the viewer like that. You can also hold down uh, command or control and scroll wheel out so you can scroll out a little bit so we can see our whole uh, project there. And so that is where we currently are, right? Obviously the size is probably not <clears throat> ideal. So we can come back into our emitter and take the size and let's go back down to one and take a look and see how that looks. So this might look good, now remember, we can also come back over here. Let's reduce this to be significantly less. Actually, we can probably go to, let's go to like three. And then in the, so we changed the number in the emitter to three. We're just reducing it because there was too many that are spawning there. And then we can increase this subframe. So let's go three on that as well. And so now we're kind of getting somewhere that's a little bit closer. So now we can see that we're really starting to move, um, moving around and the to get them to be overlapped so it almost looked like that worm effect uh, that we were initially working with, you just have to increase the, um, the subframe accuracy as well as the amount that are being spawned. Let's 
add in some more depth to this. And we're going to add in more depth by adding in uh, lights. So we're going to add in two different sets of lights. So if we right click, we go to add tool. From here, we can go into 3D and then lights. And we have a couple of different lights. One we're going to grab is ambient. But first, let's go into spotlight because this is going to allow us to pick a location for it to shine on. And then it's also going to allow us to create shadows as well. So it's going to, you know, like two things are going to be happening here. So let's uh, into this merge here. We're just going to take this uh, spotlight and go into the merge. And one thing that you'll notice with 3D merges is if you're used to 2D, 2D, we have a foreground and a background, right? Where in 3D, we don't really have that idea of foreground and background, right? Because we have three axes that we can work with. And so because of that, um, we can add as many elements that we want to into a single 3D merge, right? So we, as we add in more here, another uh, input comes in. And when I mean you can add as many as you want, you can honestly just add as many as you want. So that's what we're going to do. And in this spotlight, remember over here, we're looking at this uh, 3D merge. So up here it says uh, merge 3D. If you don't see that, you just drag and release. And we're going to click on our light. So right here's our light controls. Now we can back this up and bring it over. And then we can switch this so we can rotate it onto our scene. Now we don't actually see it over here. It could be for a couple of different reasons. So I'm just going to bring this up and let's go into our shape 3D and let's go over to lighting. And so we currently can see everything over here, right? That it's affected by light, it casts shadows and it receives shadows. So let's go back into our renderer. And then in lighting here, we can turn on lights and we can also turn on shadows if we wanted to cast shadows and be able to see those shadows. So you can see currently we turn that on. Now it's a casting a shadow. So it's up to you, if you whichever one you want. Uh, it is a little bit extra in calculating, but that's completely up to you. And so there is something additional that we can also add in. And if we add in an ambient light, so an ambient light is going to allow us to fill in other areas. So just like if I use this like a bounce card and we bounce, start bouncing light, as you can see, it's lighting up the side of my face without it, with it, right? So we can kind of light up those others with an ambient light. So let's go in and do that quick. So we'll right click, we'll add 3D light, ambient light, and we'll add that in as well. So now we're lighting up those other areas. So we can also add on a tint to these. So I'm just going to add in a slight tint to this. Right, and in here, I'm going to add in a slight tint as well. So we get something like that. And so that's currently what we're working with. Now, remember the previous, uh, the, the demo that I was showing you just had more, but we're trying to keep it quick so we can uh, iterate and get it to look how we want. And then we can load it up with more particles and um, the subframe accuracy and stuff like that. We can increase that later once we get the overall look to look good. All right, so now let's bring this over here. Now it doesn't matter where our, our uh, nodes are. I'm just trying to clean this up a little bit for the next portion that I'm going to do. Is if we take a look at this, we can see that it's going around, right? But it, we can't really see, it's not spinning. So how would we add spin? Now, if we take a look, if we just looked at this, if we took all of this and started spinning it, then we get that effect. But if we were to spin from here, we're going to be spinning all of these objects, the lights, the camera, because they're all connected into here, but we only want to spin this one, right? So what we can do is if we go into add and we can go into a, a 3D, we have a 3D transform right there, right? So we can add that in. And now what we can do is if we view this and we just look at this 3D transform, where however we remove this, right? It's going to be moving it in 3D space. So we're just going to, reset all of these. I'm just going to click this to reset. And so if we were to rotate like this, that would kind of, re, you know, give that effect. So let's come to the beginning frame zero. We're just going to keyframe, come to the other end and let's just try 360 to go one whole circle and see if that is a good spin speed. Now, remember right down here is going to show us our current frames per second. Yours might be faster, yours might be slower, but if we click on this 3D renderer, we can see uh, the caching, right? So now I'm playing back at 60 frames. And so now I can get a better idea of what it looks like. Is that too fast? Is it too slow? How would we want that to work? So I think that is good. 
Uh, one thing that I might slow down is how fast it's zipping around and to, to, to slow down how fast it's zipping around. Remember, we're going to come into the emitter. We're going to come over to our modifiers and we're just going to change the smoothing speed. So if I move this back to 10, where it, where it was by default, and now if I go through here, we can see that, remember, we're currently just caching everything. So we're currently caching everything. So it's going to play back a little slower. And we can see that because it's not moving around so fast, there's more of them um, that are stacking on top of each other. So I think the overall amount that we're adding into the scene is probably a good amount because it's looking kind of like our pulsing worm. But let's see how fast it's going now that everything is cached. And I think that looks good. I think that is kind of I think it's fine. It could be a little slower, it could be a little faster, up to your liking, but I think at this point, we are looking pretty good on um, having, now remember how this is working. The particle system is doing all this simulation for particles, right? So if you think of the particle system, you can have it do anything, but then we're tying in whatever that happens with the particle system, and we're adding on a 3D element right? So it's the sphere. And then we're adding in all of the tools that we can use within the 3D system as well. So we're adding on lighting, we're adding the camera so we could do like different camera moves as well. And because it's a 3D environment, we could also have it interact with other objects in a 3D environment as well. And this allows us to really, you know, play with the idea of parallax, where when things are farther away from the camera, they move a bit slower, but when they get close to the camera, they move faster. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with all of this. And remember, it doesn't have to be a sphere, it can be anything. Uh, and the particle system can do anything. You could have, you know, you could set up this whole uh, geometry where the particles are bouncing off all different things, but then you could have it be like a ball or you could have it be a box or anything that you want. Um, and, you know, use the two systems working together if it makes, makes sense on how that works. One thing that I didn't say in this episode, I think I talked about in the last one, but if you're working in this environment and you see that it's going kind of slow, you can also turn off high quality while we're working in the viewer. Uh, when we go to render out, it will always render out in the high quality option, but if you want it to be in the lower quality, uh, you just right click here and there's high quality and motion blur and you can turn them on, you can toggle them on or off like that. And that will speed up your uh, workflow while you're working in the environment. And when you render out, it'll always do everything high quality. But just a way to, you know, make your iterations and, and work on the project a little quicker. I, didn't, I don't think I talked about it here, but I talked about it in the last video. If you didn't uh, see that one, go back and take a look at that one to see how we did the particle system. And then the next video is all going to be about taking this 3D element now, uh, rendering out in 2D, which we kind of did here, but now let's add in all of these other effects that we can use that are uh, powered by DaVinci Resolve. Some of them are going to be studio only, uh, but at least you can see the benefits of working in the Fusion 3D environment or the Fusion environment in DaVinci Resolve versus the standalone version of Fusion because there's slightly different uh, uh, sets of nodes that we can that we have access to within DaVinci Resolve's uh, version of Fusion. So, but before I let you go, I wanted to tell you about the website jrtv.com where I have a ton of different content and actually certification courses because I am a DaVinci Resolve certified trainer. I also have pre-made assets if you're into that. Think titles, transitions, bar charts, slideshows, infographs, all of that stuff is available on the website. Take a look at that. But uh, there'll be a link in the description to the playlist for that third and final video, a part of the series. And with that being said, my name's Justin. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next one, peace.